All right, wonderful person. What do you think is going on in this image? Well, what you're seeing here is known as the Spirograph Nebula. Also referred to as IC418, that's not just a beautiful picture, in this case captured by the Hubble Space Telescope, but is actually an incredible cosmic laboratory where scientists have directly witnessed how the star changes in approximately 130 years. Specifically witnessing the star's rapid demise, because this particular star is extremely close to its end. And the implications from these observations are pretty significant. Significant enough to challenge some of our previous assumptions when it comes to the idea behind star evolution and the star death. And so in today's video, we're going to discuss some of the recent studies about this object that surprisingly reveals that sometimes the universe changes much, much faster than we actually think. But I guess first, let's describe this object just so that it makes a little bit more sense. And so what exactly is IC418? Well, we actually refer to these as planetary nebula. And in general, these objects are formed when stars, especially stars not so different from our sun, reach the point where they start expanding quite a lot and start to throw out huge plumes of gas from their surface. This usually marks the final stages of the star's life, when the core of the star becomes unstable, and when it starts to shed its outer layers, with the now naked core rapidly energizing and then illuminating the gas and dust around it, making it glow, forming these beautiful structures. And so in the case of IC418, the central star is known as HD35914. And this is an old type star, a star that's very hot and very bright. But this object is known as the Spirograph Nebula because of its somewhat intricate swirling patterns that resemble a spirograph or a somewhat popular older toy. Although the exact origin of these patterns inside the nebula are still not entirely clear. But at a distance of approximately 1360 light years away from us, this is one of the most exciting such objects. And its vibrant colors generally come from different chemical elements, with the red hues in this case representing nitrogen, or actually the coldest gas in the nebula, and the green light coming from hydrogen that represents most of the gas. Whereas the traces of blue come from oxygen, with oxygen being the hottest gas, mostly because of the proximity to the central star. But we also know that this nebula is comparatively young. Its age is believed to be anywhere from 1100 to maybe 1400 years old, so this particular process actually started not so long ago. And by the way, our sun is very likely going to become something very similar in approximately 5 billion years. But I guess now let's discuss some of the more unusual discoveries and the groundbreaking part of everything here. For the first time, scientists have been able to directly track the slow transformation of the star for over a century. And what they did discover was a little bit surprising. And as always, you can read more about this in the study in the description. And here, by meticulously piecing together observations dating back to 1893, which was the first ever picture taken of this object, one of the first discoveries was that this nebulous signature green light, mostly emitted by oxygen atoms, seems to have grown at least two and a half times stronger since 1893. But more importantly, this increase has actually been kind of linear, roughly around 0.9% per year. And in this case, the significant change seems to be coming from the star itself, the star that's heating up faster than any other typical star ever observed. In other words, the increase in brightness and luminosity is coming from the central object, from that O-type core in the center, with the temperature of the star increasing by approximately 3000 degrees Celsius since 1893, or essentially 1000 degrees Celsius or 1800 Fahrenheit every 40 years. And to put that into perspective, our sun increased by the same amount during its initial formation, but that process took approximately 10 million years. And so based on the models in this study, this object seems to increase in temperature by anywhere from 15 to 40 degrees every year. And this makes IC418 the most prolonged and most unusual rapid transformation ever recorded in astronomy, or at least ever recorded in a star. And while well, not surprisingly, this bizarre rapid heating seems to be consistent with the predicted age for this object, which was just under 1400 years. But here's where things get a little bit more exciting and perhaps a bit perplexing. While the star is heating faster than anything we've physically observed, this rate is still slower than the latest theoretical predictions and the latest models. And the discrepancy in this case is not minor. It actually does challenge current predictions about how these stars are supposed to change and how they're supposed to evolve. Moreover, there's an additional paradox. 
Right now it's referred to as the carbon star paradox. The current mass of the star has been derived to be approximately 0.56 solar masses, which implies that the progenitor main sequence mass, or the original star, was approximately 2.2 to maybe 1.5 solar masses, making this somewhat similar to the nearby Alpha Centauri A. But here this nebula seems to be extremely rich in carbon, and current models for carbon star formation suggest that the star should be at least 1.65 solar masses to create the amount of carbon we see, or to actually create what's known as a carbon star, which this one seems to be. Here the carbon to oxygen ratio is approximately 1.3. And so here there's a contradiction between the derived mass and the amount of carbon observed. And so some of the parts of the evolution of this nebula and the star create a bit of a mystery for astronomers. But I guess one of the more exciting parts of the study is how all of this was discovered, specifically the observational part. And here this is based on over a century of data. 130 years of observations from wide range of telescopes and instruments, including actual descriptions written by hand, from human eye measurements in the late 1800s. But this also involved verified, calibrated, and thoroughly processed data before all of this was then analyzed in a study. And this allowed the researchers to measure the star's heating rate, determine its current mass, and of course estimate the mass before the transformation, with one of the major measurements being the observations of that oxygen glow. By measuring the strength of oxygen, which was quite visible, even back in the 1800s, this allowed the researchers to directly estimate the overall change in photoionization, which was the result of the star heating up. And so the way that the study was conducted by itself is quite remarkable. But I guess the other question is, why does this matter, and what did this teach us about stars similar to our sun once they become old enough? Well here this is the first direct insight into how planetary nebula evolve over time because we're literally observing evolution of a nebula by analyzing observations over several decades. Normally, in astronomy, to see such dramatic changes, we would have to wait much, much longer. Yet here, IC418 is evolving fast enough to be directly trackable within a human lifetime, reinforcing the idea that sometimes the night skies can indeed change much faster than we think. But here this is also exciting because it's essentially a brand new planetary nebula, containing what's known as post-AGB star. Essentially a star formed after the red giant stage of a typical sun-like object. And so here the star, initially very large and very cold, will actually shrink and heat up, which is exactly what we seem to be observing right now. But the duration of the stage changes depending on the star's initial mass, so it can be anywhere from a few thousand to hundred thousand years. But intriguingly, this object only became physically visible not so long ago. And that's based on what we know about these stars and based on what we know about these nebula. And so normally these post-AGB stars start very cold at approximately 3000 Kelvin and eventually heat up to about 200,000. This is a result of shrinking and becoming smaller and smaller. But until they reach the temperature of about 30,000 Kelvin, they're just unable to ionize the gas around themselves. And so they just appear as these tiny, tiny objects in the middle. But once the temperature of 30,000 is reached, they then become physically visible and transform over time as the star becomes hotter and hotter. And based on this graph and based on the calculations from the study, this very likely only happened sometimes in the 1800s. And so there's actually a really big chance that in the next few decades, as the temperature increases more and more, we'll actually see this whole object transform into something even more radiant and even more beautiful, very likely revealing additional features that are currently invisible. And so right now it looks more compact and a lot more spherical, simply because the star is just not hot enough to reveal everything else. And so for astronomers, this particular object provides an important new tracer for the evolution of these ancient stars and for helping us understand what's going to happen to the sun in 5 billion years. In essence, this is a direct observational evidence that doesn't just push the boundaries of theoretical understanding, but provides us with physical evidence for how we believe stars evolve and also serves as a powerful reminder for the value of historical scientific data going back over a hundred years. But at least for now, that's all I wanted to discuss. We'll definitely come back and discuss the subject or additional planetary nebula in some of the future videos. But until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. Alternatively, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.